Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of I Bought A Watch. If you're new to the channel, please remember to like and subscribe if you enjoy the episode. Jumping straight in, we are back and we're looking at this swatch that I received in a secret Santa with a host of other watch YouTube channels based in my corner of the world. Now, I'll link to the original unboxing video up here in the top corner if you want to go check that out. So, if you're not familiar with my reviews, I will go through a brief history segment on this piece, then I'll run through the specifications of the watch, dimensions and stats, giving my thoughts and feelings of the piece, and finally close out with a segment that I like to call reasons not to buy this watch. Now, if you're new, do stick around because it's not what it sounds like. Sometimes you probably should buy this watch if it's the one for you. Now, moving on to the history. So Swatch or Second Watch, is a Swiss revolutionary watch company born out of the idea of cheap, fun, and modern wristwatches for the masses. Now, swatches really do come in all shapes and sizes with an almost limitless set of designs, colors, and complications. Today, we're looking at this Swatch Irony Chrono, reference number YCS4050. Now, I'll pop that on screen. Now, like most swatches, this one seems to be largely lost to time, and finding out a too much info about this piece in particular was fairly hard. From the packaging, I can see that this one was originally retail priced at £85, but I haven't really been able to find anywhere that it's still for sale, so sorry there if you had your heart set on this one in particular. That being said, the Irony range is rather cool, and features a lot of cool and out there offerings, including some, shall we say, rather familiar looking designs. I'll link the Swatch website for you guys in the description below for you guys to have a browse, but I really recommend going on secondhand sites like eBay and keeping an eye out as there's plenty of really good deals to be had out there. Okay, kicking it off with the dimensions, we have a 40 millimeter diameter, a 46 millimeter lug to lug, approximately 22 millimeter lug width, because of course this is a swatch, so it has that rather unconventional integrated bracelet attachment. And the thickness here is 12 millimeters, which does include that domed acrylic crystal. Talking about the crystal, being acrylic, this gives the watch a lovely warm glow with almost no reflection. However, it does come at the cost of being incredibly prone to scratches. And as you can see, this one has picked up a fair few over the years. Moving into the dial and what a dial it is, starting from the pinion and moving out, the watch features a segmented hour and minute hands with dual colored loom and a bright green chronograph seconds hand. The dial features prominent black subdials at the two, six and 10 with a monochrome high contrast white hand on each of them. The top two are relating to the chronograph function, I'll come back to those later, and the one at the six o'clock displays the running seconds. This is kind of where the lack of color ends for this piece. However, as they all do feature that color spectrum surround that really adds a vibrant flair. Filling these spaces between the subdials are loomed four, eight, and 12 Arabics, printed on that lovely sunburst silver dial. Further printing on the dial includes the swatch branding under the 12 and that all important Swiss made either side of the six o'clock position. The dial edge features a rainbow spectrum minute track to match the subdials and 24 hour indicators just inside that. To add even more to a seemingly colorful and chaotic dial, a cutout date window and black date wheel are located at the three o'clock position. Before I move on to the case, let me show you the loom. Now, as you can see, this watch has a really cool loom profile, and this lasts for a significant amount of time, far longer than any chronograph really should. This gives the piece a more than suitable low light visibility, and one that is surprisingly still multicolored, even in pitch black. Moving on to the case, which is made from bead blasted aluminium, the watch features a matching aluminium bezel, which has a printed tachymeter with a very retro digital font choice. The rest of the case features no hard lines or angles, which I think really matches the design language of this piece incredibly well. 
Coming around to the side, we have a set of polished pushers and crown at that three o'clock position. Pulling the crown to its first position allows you to set the date and the second position hacks the movement and allows you to set that time. Special mention to the little recess under the crown, which allows you to easily pull that crown out as it is rather small for big fingers. The chronograph pushers work very well and as you would expect, they actually have a really nice and tactile feel to them with a satisfying click. Pushing the chronograph is normal. The top pusher is the start stop and the bottom pusher is your lap time and reset. In regards to reading the chronograph, a one tenth of a second reading is on that two o'clock subdial, and the minutes are recorded on the 10 o'clock subdial. I'll leave the chronograph running for you guys just so you guys can see it through the remainder of the video. Flipping over the case and looking at the rear, we can see that this piece is almost a monoblock case construction, as like most watches, there is little to no access to that movement inside. I'll come on to this at the end, but as you can see, neatly and helpfully engraved on the back is the battery specifications, as if you hadn't noticed, this is a quartz piece. Also engraved is the model series, aluminium case, water resistance, and four jewels relating to the Swiss made movement inside. We can also see the integrated strap attachment, which is fairly annoying for strap swappers like me, but moving on to the strap, thankfully the supplied silicon strap is great and suits this watch to a T. The strap tapers from 22 millimeters down to 20 and has a webbing texture on the top with raised colored squares. Whereas the reverse features a fishbone pattern which aids breathability when wearing this one. The matching aluminium buckle is nicely signed with the swatch logo and I guess you can say integrates the first keeper with a secondary floating silicon keeper ensuring that any excess strap is held secure. Speaking of which, let's get this one on the wrist. And there she is. Isn't she a beauty? I love how this one wears. It's a really fun little watch. Not an everyday piece for sure, but definitely one for a party perhaps, or for a day where you just need a little boost. I can tell you for sure that every day I wear this piece on the wrist, it really brings a smile to my face when I do check the time. Okay, now we're on to the segment where I talk about reasons not to buy this watch. As I mentioned before, this is not to say that I dislike these watches, but just pointing out the main drawbacks that you have to overcome when you choose to buy this piece. First and foremost, it's a quartz. So it's not gonna be for everyone, and this is definitely compounded by the wacky color scheme, which will no doubt be polarizing for you guys. Next is the crystal. This is an acrylic crystal, so it will pick up scratches like nobody's business. So you really need to be careful or have some poly watch at hand to buff out those scratches if you want this one looking smart. Lastly, and this is a bit of a weird one, is the ethos of the Swatch company in general. Now, this is not unique to Swatch, but it's something that really bugs me about companies when they make it unnecessarily hard to modify, change, or work with their products. It's just sad that once this one dies, and not just the battery, I mean the movement itself, it's gonna be unnecessarily hard for me to fix. But even on a simpler level, it's things like I can't simply swap the strap to give this one a different look, which is just an inconvenience. Anyway, that does it for this episode. What do you guys think about Swatch watches? Let me know in the comments below, but that does it for this episode. So please do like and subscribe if you haven't already and enjoyed the episode. And all that's left to say is stay awesome, stay safe, and I'll see you again in the next episode. Bye.